So ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the fifth and very first online EU China Literary Festival. I'm your moderator, Rianka Mohan, and joining me is Li Hui, our translator. It is with great pleasure that I introduce our illustrious speakers for the evening, Josef Banash from Slovakia and Chen Shiwo from China. Mm -hmm. In his essay, Inside the Whale, George Orwell wrote, to accept civilization as it is, practically means accepting decay. It was his call to the literary community to involve themselves in the world and seek change for the better. Tonight, we're privileged to be in the virtual presence of our panelists, two writers who have in their own way answered his call. Josef is one of Slovakia's most successful authors with a prolific body of work for which he has won several national and international awards. His books have been translated into many languages and he's presented them in 18 countries. His documentary novel, Jubilation Zone, is the most translated Slovak literary work. Based on the number of copies of his books sold alone, statistically, every eighth household in Slovakia owns one of his books. He's also a prominent politician in Slovakia and in 2004 was the first Slovak citizen to be elected vice chairman of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly. Please join me in welcoming the man whom Dan Brown called a seeker of truth. And Xi Wu needs little introduction in China. He's one of contemporary China's most acclaimed authors and his work has won many awards. He holds a doctorate in comparative and world literature and his books have been widely translated including into English, French and Japanese among others. He was the first writer to be part of Leeds University's prestigious Writing Chinese Project, a showcase of distinguished Chinese literature, literary voices in the UK. Please welcome the man that The Economist magazine called a maverick writer. So I thought we might begin by giving the audience some context for your work. And if you don't mind, um, if both of us can tell us, uh, both of you can tell us a bit about your writing and what you're working on uh, recently, lately. Mm -hmm. uh, Yosef, I'll start with you. You know, uh, be, to be a great writer in such a small country as Slovakia is, is not, not such a big problem. Uh, to be a great writer in such a big country as China is, that's some achievement. <laughs> uh, why did I start? You know, basically that was my dream uh, from my very childhood to be a writer, uh, but uh, it get into fulfillment basically when I was 57, I mean, as a novelist. I have written during my whole life, but the novels, I started to write 13 years ago just. And uh, the question, why do I write? The answer is very simple, because nobody wants to listen to me. Even when I was member of the parliament, nobody wanted to listen to me. So I simply decided I will write. Okay, thank you, that was. And see you all. Fui 所以说的话呢，我觉得无话可说。那不知道我今晚能说多少话？我刚才看到巴拉斯先生的话呢，状态呢比较阳光啊，我非常羡慕。但是这这我做不到的。我非常高兴，就刚才知道说巴拉斯
have it here. And there is the half of water. So there are people, they see that the glass is half empty and the people, they see that the, that the glass is half full. And I can understand uh, my fellow friend, Mr. Shivo. I have read about him. And that's why I said it's a great honor to me being in one communication with such a nice man. But I think I wouldn't say that the world is getting worse. I can understand him based on his personal experiences, but I mean, uh, the world is composed of millions of millions of cells. I compare the world with a human body. And uh, this is always a temptation of writers to make the world better. And uh, I understood in my life, I'm 72, you know, uh, Mr. Shiva said, I am optimistic. If you are 72, then you have no other possibility just to be an optimist. <laughs> and uh, so if you want to make the world better, the only possibility is not to make the whole collectives, the whole societies better, but to start with every cell. And I, Josef Banash, I am one of the small cells, which are the crucial part of this whole world. So for me, the writing, is something like, uh, you know, I say, I compare writing or writer with a gardener. The gardener is working in the garden just ostensibly on the, in the garden. Basically he's working on himself. So I consider writing, for me is writing a tool to make myself better than I was yesterday, if I may say it like this. <laughs> 这个可能跟我对文学的理解我觉得文学这是一个它的特征因此的话我知道它的逻辑跟现实生活的逻辑是不能混为一谈的所以我竭力的包括对我的学生对一些的年轻的作者我都跟他们讲有离文学不要让自己的文学的黑暗给他一道
in this way. Um, so my next question is, do you think of the audience when you write? And if yes, who is your ideal reader? Um, I can start with uh, Chen Shivo this time. If 我只写我自己的这是我的话对在考虑作者跟读者这方面的一个观点吧所以我基本上写作是为了自己写作不为别人I fully agree with this approach absolutely basically I don't care generally if some people do read, uh, do read my books or not the same feeling as Mr. Chivo said I have some internal needs to bring something on paper, my emotions, my feelings, my experience. As I said at the beginning, for me, the writing is a tool in order to make myself better than I was yesterday, if you understand. So that's the first goal of my writing. And then when there are people, they do agree with me, with my ideas, they read my books, so the better for me, I'm happier, but as, as she was said, by writing, the reader is for me not the essential. So what, in your opinion, are the essential elements for a book to transcend its local setting and become a global story? And who are some of your favorite writers who do this well? Perhaps uh, she would like to answer. <laughs> 我心目中的好作家是那种的话呢有思维张力的有思想厚度的那么一些作家那那那种东西比如说像莎士比亚啊比如说像刘托斯泰像托斯托斯基像卡夫卡这种这种人啊我是比较喜欢的那这里面关系
uh, Chinese writers should be writing along more universal themes or, or, or looking to, to, to write stories beyond their own experience. 就从小说而已如果通过文学来了解中国社会 呃，的原因，就我在读他们，比如说我读莎士比亚，我读莎士比亚，我读哈姆莱特，我并不是的话呢，一定要去了解当时的一些社会状况，我读的是一个精神性的哈姆莱特，我读托斯托夫斯基，
啊，所以说的话呢，在这一点上来说，应该说你刚才那理解也对，这是我的这么一个理解。所以说的话呢，作家一定一定的话呢，要扎根于自己的生活、自己的现实中间、自己的处境中间。如果的话呢，抽离这个处境去写一些风花雪月，我觉得他就是一个伪作家，就就不是那个。当然的话，我要说明一点的是，作家就文学作品不是政治作品。不能拘泥于政治作品，但是它超越政治。那至于说自作家的话呢，到处跑那种东西，我觉得这个要分两类。一类的话，比如走到到世界各国去，一种是游历，但是的话，我觉得这个游历是不行的。或者你到哪里去开会，去举行一个什么文学活动，这个都不太行的。就是你要在那个地方生存，这个是非常重要的。因为我本身我在日本，我是生存了好多年。啊，就然后的话，跟那些去过日本游历的，跟日本去过日本开会的，甚至跟呃到日本去参加一些文学活动的，我的感受是不一样的。我觉得后者就是那种呢，去游历的那种的，就基本上对文学是没有益处的，甚至有害处，因为它很容易产生一种偏见，一一种自以为是。而我当年在日本的话呢，说白了就说的话呢，如果我不像，就不认真的像当地人那样去生活，我可能就会饿死。我我要做好多好多细致的事情，要摆脱摆脱好多的困境。那这个的话，对写作应该是很有很大的益处的。Yosef, you recently wrote a book about Alexander Dubček, right? What made you decide to write about him, and what do you hope to convey about him? Look, I have just to repeat what I said already. That、uh, There is a great difference between a writer in China or in India or in Slovakia, because even if you agree with、uh, politics in your country, even if you don't agree, but you are someone who belongs to a great community. You are thinking global. I would say, I could say, but we have to strengthen our self-confidence. I would say by. Showing our own people, we writers, by showing our own people, and mostly to young men, young people, that we have also at least someone, some personalities in our history. They were famous also abroad, not only in Slovakia. I don't know if the name of Alexander Dubček is in China known or not, but anyway, in Europe. He is a personification of a man who has brought us in the not even the best、uh, totalitarian times in sixty seventies. He has brought us hope. He has brought us, you know. Imagine I was at the time of the, of the so-called Prague Spring, or let's say Czechoslovak Spring. I was nineteen years old. I had my, I was student at the university. In Dubček time, it was. It seems to me it was these two years of his rule of the Communist Party were a little bit similar to the Chinese, to what is going now on in China. That generally in communist regimes, people were not allowed to travel around the world, and so on, so. But in Dubček time, within these two years, we could go everywhere where we want, where we wanted. Even in his time, in Prague, just in the capital, former Czechoslovakia. Twenty thousand American students lived in Prague because the borders were open and free. And、uh, he has brought the hope not only for Czechoslovakia but for the whole Europe.、Uh, we remember there was this movie、uh, movement hippies in Europe. There were these red brigades in Germany, Rudi Dutschke, and so and so on. So the whole America was in war with Vietnam. So these sixty years end of sixties were very very turbulent. So Dubček was for me, by the way, I I knew him personally, someone who is、uh, more than the borders of our small country. That's why I decided to write a novel about him to give our young people an example that we can have with small nations. We can have also someone who is at least for Europe important. So you know the world has become a shrinking place in some sense with the internet and、um, just this year we have seen how、um, you know a thing that started in one country we are 
all shared that experience and you kind of feel like you have something in common with every other person on the planet this year. Um, do you feel literature or writers have responsibility um, to aim for a more universal, more global literary landscape or should they um, try to preserve their own cultural and literary traditions? Okay, yes, absolutely. The, one of the main goals of literature is to enhance the common, if you want, the global feeling of that we belong together. And uh, this is a contribution, this should be a contribution of every one single writer to enrich the world literature. But again, as I said already, what does it mean a world, world literature? You do not have any global literature. You do not have any global culture. You just have national traditions and national cultures, national literatures, which, and they together form a global or a world culture. So that's why uh, we have to at least try to bring ideas, situations, and more, uh, first of all, emotions that the people understand each other. And I'm trying with my books, with my novels to, to, to go this way. Yeah, 但是的话呢这时候的话我就可以写作这是一个另外一个我就写唐代疫情不在一个层次上的事情 It's interesting uh, approach because now a very hypothetical question Could you imagine a very direct question that a Chinese writer would leave China, go to the United States and praise the communist regime in China. You mean in the United States, his text would be published? I can tell just, I can tell just my personal, you know, we are living, as I said, I am 72 years old, so I can compare the lives, the possibilities of writing or the freedom of speech in communist time and now in democracy. In communist time, yes, please. So I don't have experience because in communist time I have written only some uh, TV scenarios for, for children, but not serious novels. But a, a very concrete example from this year, better to say from last year, as you said, I am one of the most uh, popular writers in Slovakia. And uh, one of my Russian friends invited me to Russia last year to go with him to Crimea, to the, to the so-called occupied by Russians occupied Crimea. I said myself that no one journalist, no one TV team was so far in Crimea. So I decided to go there. I went there for eight days. We have taken a car with Russian, uh, Russian car. And I went wherever I wanted. I came back 
And I, uh, Josef Banas, as I said, one of the most popular writers, I have written a reportage, more a short novel about Crimea, about the truth, how the people they live and how they communicate with, with, uh, with Russians. And I have written that in my understanding, there is no occupation that the people are indeed really happy that they belong to Russia. I have offered this, my reportage, to mainstream media in Slovakia, one, second, third, four, five, fifths, all refused to publish this reportage, this report, all. So we are living in democracy. That's the question of the truth. What Dan Brown said about me, I am someone who is searching for the truth. That's the main goal of, of writers. But if you bring a truth which doesn't stick, which doesn't correspond with the official policy, official politics, you have the same problems as we had in communist time or in democracy. That's my experience. Um,这个东西的话呢,是相对而言,就说肯定,哪怕是美国,比如说刚才问我一个问题,如果在美国写一个歌声共产主义的作品,他能不能出版,呃,现在我不好说,但是的话在前些年,应该的话呢,他是可
Just I want to say, not even democracy is the most optimal political system which gives us freedom, total freedom for speech. Um, so we're almost out of time. Um, I would just end, like to end by asking both writers, how would you like to be remembered? I hope there <laughs> the same I wanted to say, she was my sympathies. I don't care if I will be remembered or not. That's not my problem. So I thank both um, Josef Banias and um, Banash and uh, Chen Xiwo for a very lively and interesting discussion today. Um, you both started by agreeing to disagree and ended by agreeing. Um, but I think, you know, just from our conversation today, neither of you is likely to be forgotten. Um, so thank you for, for your time.